Hi, this is Shadi and I figured that we talked a lot about how Judo originated and specifically the mention of Japanese Jiu Jitsu but today I want to go back even further and discuss how the Japanese Jiu Jitsu itself originated and what are the roots and what was the context for it to evolve as an unarmed or lightly armed style of combat. So Japanese Jiu Jitsu actually began during the Sengoku period which was from the 1400s till the beginning of the 1600s and during that uh, period it was combining various Japanese martial arts which were used on the battlefield for close combat so for example um, on the battlefield we use bows and arrows swords etc on the horses so the possibility of unarmed combat was were very slim until you lost all your weapons and all you had was you know your grappling so they were mainly uh, evolved for this aspect and the oldest form of jiu-jitsu was Takenoichi Ryu which was founded in 1532 and many jiu-jitsu forms also extensively taught mainly how to defend against weapons, uh, the sword, the dagger or the tanto uh, and small weapons and that was very actually unique and revolutionary because during that period in East in the Far East, neighboring countries like Korea, uh, China, Okinawa, etc. They were all relying on striking based martial arts. For example, you have Kung Fu till this day, Karate, Taekwondo, etc. etc. But the Japanese were doing very close combat, relying mainly on grappling, such as throwing, immobilizing, you know, Kansetsu Waza locks and the Shime Waza, the chokes. So in the early of the 17th century or the 1600s during the Edo period, Jiu Jitsu continued to evolve, but the hand to hand combat in particular um, evolved greatly because there were strict laws that were put to impose uh, by the shogunate in order to reduce war and conflict and therefore uh, the country became at peace and there were no in internal conflict and the country was unified and therefore um, stuff like weapons and armors were used as decorative elements and this allowed the hand-to-hand -hand combat aspect of Jiu Jitsu in particular to flourish and evolve and to become like a new form of self-defense uh, outside of the battlefield so for the streets uh, for example and new techniques were created to adapt because you know in the streets you're not wearing an armor uh, you can even add some strikes uh, for example have you seen the old uh, samurai armors you cannot strike someone or else you'll just break your hand or you know it will not be effective so grappling was needed so a little bit of striking was a little uh, added for example the eye gouges the the chops on the throat the hammer fists to the back of the neck uh, etc were added so it was still vicious even though it uh, was mainly hand-to-hand -hand combat but however towards the 18th century uh, the number of striking techniques uh, were reduced considering they were less effective against someone that was very skilled in grappling and till this day in the UFC for example we still see it a very skilled grappler uh, will most likely dominate a skilled striker so they started to rely mostly on what is uh, you know strangles throws and uh, locks and during that same period here's the the interesting part is that because of peace and a unified country and government they would organize these uh, for example school meetups and they would do like a friendly randori without the risks they would have rules to protect etc so the idea that uh, judo evolved as a sport aspect of jiu-jitsu is false and also saying that something has rules in order to protect and make it a sports like uh, discipline therefore rendering it ineffective is also false now you may reduce some of the effectiveness or the the choices like for example leg grabs but that by no means uh, an art like judo 
uh, or Greco-Roman wrestling, that, which also cannot, uh, they don't have leg grabbing, does not mean that they are not effective. They are still lethal. They are still very well um, efficient in self-defense. So they would organize these tournaments of Randori uh, in the 1700s and people would just participate and also combating safely without the intention to kill. So the first time the term jujitsu was said or coined, it was during that uh, period, the 17th century, um, which in that time was a blanket statement for a lot of styles. Just like now we say Kung Fu, but there are actually a lot of things that go into Kung Fu, like Wing Chun, uh, and other stuff I really am not educated on the Kung Fu subject but Jiu Jitsu was the same um, that's why we have Fuzen Ryu we have Tenshin Shinyu Ryu Totsukaha etc etc so when someone says Japanese Jiu Jitsu that's a very broad statement and I think you are all aware of this so it was it had other names such as short sword grappling uh, grappling for short, uh, like Kumi Uchi in uh, Japan, Body Art, Taijutsu, Softness or Yawara, Art of Harmony, Wajutsu. So uh, these terms, you would know that they weren't invented in the 20th century. For example, the Art of Harmony. So when, when we say Aikido, um, the way of blending harmony or harmonizing energy. So I'm pretty sure that stemmed from uh, wajutsu or the art of harmony there was also catching hands torite and even judo the term judo was even being used in 1724 200 years before um, kano jiu-jitsu was officially called judo uh, if you don't recall kano jiu-jitsu was called officially judo around 1925 so even in uh, the 18th century uh, people were calling jiu-jitsu judo so when you say judo or jiu-jitsu it really doesn't matter it's either you know the gentle technique or the gentle way of doing combat for example so it really doesn't matter it, all that matters is the ju part which is the softness or you know technical part or the soft aspect so today you know, the systems of unarmed combat uh, that were developed during that first period, uh, the Sangoku period, and even before the Muro Machi uh, period, uh, they are referred collectively as old style Jiu Jitsu. And at this period in history, uh, the systems were not systems of unarmed combat. They first started as uh, defending against big to small uh, arms. Again, like for example, you lose your sword in the battle, all you have left is your knife in the back of your armor. So, weapons were very much involved and defending against knives was very much uh, needed. So, even the minor to the biggest uh, weapons. So, the method of combat uh, included striking, but mainly it was throwing due to the lack of efficiency against a high skilled grappler and also a lack of efficiency against an armor so uh, that's mainly it it was uh, developed from the 1300s through the 1700s going through uh, several sta uh, several terms like kumi uchi uh, judo taijutsu uh, wajutsu etc and even politics affected it in order to become uh, very efficient in terms of hand to hand combat. For example, when the uh, Tokugawa shogunate uh, reduced and uh, put laws to make it strict so people would not have internal conflict and also not have uh, little battles, people dropped their weapons and mainly focused on hand to hand combat for the streets and also developing techniques against unarmored not armed, unarmored uh, opponents. So I think it's very uh, interesting how a lot of, uh, you know, context goes into martial arts, whether it is development of technique or the invention itself or the widespread 
itself and I really find it interesting uh, how it all ties together. I hope you enjoyed this short historical uh, segment. This was Shadi and thank you for listening.